Embers and sparks are two amazing elements that are useful for conveying a source of fire as well as additional heat sources. It is an interesting effect that is difficult to replicate digitally due to its organic behaviour and the movement. This is why many artists tend to reach for stock footage as it is easier to implement into a composition and because it is pre-filmed footage of real embers, it is typically the better option. Though HitFilm has a powerful built-in particle simulator that is often used for creating this effect, there are only a few examples of the effect being created realistically. So that is what I will be focusing on today. If you are using HitFilm Express, you will need to purchase the 3D Particles Pack from the add-ons page of Effects Home. If you have Pro, it will come built in and should be able to find it within the Effects panel. Now one of the great things about this effect is the variety of possibilities you can use it for, allowing you to create a unique simulation for your specific project or shot, so go crazy. So with that being said, let's get into it. To start off, I'll create a new 1080p comp at 24 frames per second. I'll then come over to the effects panel and search for the particle simulator before dragging it to the timeline. If I drag the playhead across, you can see the particles emitting from a central point. I'll come into the emitter settings and reposition the emitter to a desired point in 3D space, and change the trajectory to cone. We should now see that the particles are flowing towards a certain direction. If I come into the trajectory settings, I can alter the direction of the flow as well as the radius of the cone, creating a wider spread. Next, I want the particles to fall as though they are being affected by gravity and bounce off of a ground plane. To do this, I can come down to the forces section and add a new force. By default, the particles will become affected and form downwards. I can come into the settings and adjust the strength so that the particles do not have a steep fall. If you'd like, you can go back into the emitter and down in the particle system to where it says movement and adjust the speed. This can influence the particles to flow faster and farther or slower with little reach while still being affected by the force. Now I want to create my ground. You can either use the built-in deflector and change the height and scale properties then bring it down in 3D space so that the particles collide with it or you can create a 3D plane, rotate it on the x-axis so that it is facing downwards and dragging it down roughly into position. Then, if we add a new deflector and change the option from cuboid to plane and assign it to the 3D plane, the deflector will now take after the plane we've created. Next up, we are going to be adding variation to the particles and really start to create the appearance of embers. Coming back to the movement tab in the system, I will decrease the scale of the particles down to a small value, somewhere between 3 and 8, which causes the particles to become rather small. I would then increase the life to around 3 to 4 seconds and the speed to around 250. To compensate for the scale, I will come to the movement variation tab and increase the value slightly, causing some of the particles to be bigger than others. I can then increase the life so that certain particles linger for a longer period and speed for less uniformity in the particles velocity pattern. I will then come to the general tab where I can increase the particles per second to around 1500. You can now see more particles being spawned per second as the simulation goes on. This is key to having a more realistic and or photo real simulation, as real embers and sparks tend to be small in scale, but very large in quantity. So don't be afraid to increase the amount of particles, as long as your system can handle it of course. Whilst we're here in the general tab, if your emitter is moving within the scene, you may find it helpful to introduce some sort of velocity. This causes particles to flow more freely in the direction that the emitter is moving. For example, if the emitter is moving in multiple directions over time, you can see some residue particles still flying in those initial directions, creating more natural movement and behaviour for the particles. Finally, I want to define some of the behaviour of the collision between the particles and the ground plane. If we come back to the movement section and come down to the bottom, we can see these three options, mass, bounce and friction. Bounce is basically how much the particles bounce off of deflectors, friction is how much the particles can slide on the surface whilst colliding. I'm just going to decrease both of these values so that the particles have less bounce and more slide, and you can even further adjust this in the movement variation tab. Now I have my particles behaviour set in a format that I prefer, but next we are going to focus on the appearance of the particles. If we look at reference images of sparks and embers, we can see that the core of each particle is usually white hot or might have a slight washed out tint, but it is the surrounding glow that creates the colour. 
So to start, I will open the quick effects menu and set for glow. In the settings, I can set the radius right now so that we get this very tight glow on the particles and increase the intensity to make them more vibrant. For the color, I can come to the color channels here and I will set the blue slider down to zero and the red slider up to two. This will introduce a warm orange hue to the glow. You can also come down to the A and B colors to add your own color palette to the glow, but I will leave that for another time. Next, I will duplicate the glow effects twice and adjust the settings for each one, creating a natural fall off for the glow. If you would like to adjust the color in future, you can always use a colorize effect on top. Here you can adjust the color and its strength to your liking without having to tediously go back and forth through your glow effects. One final thing I like to add is an exposure effect. If you are using hit film, you can get this effect from the color starter pack in the add-on store. Now the reason why I like to use this effect is because you can adjust the vibrance and exposure of the particles in a very accurate way. For example, if I increase the offset to 9, we can see the core of the particles become more white in color. Finally, I want my embers to have a streak-like appearance, which is achieved with motion blur. If I touch up the motion blur button, we can see the particles have now become updated and they have motion blur on them. I want the streaks to be longer however, so in order to do so, I can come to the project settings and come to the advanced tab, and at the bottom, we have the project's motion blur settings. I can simply increase the shutter option to a higher value, and we'll see that the streaks are now longer when we hit OK. Now, this may become an issue if you have other elements in the composition that are using the motion blur as well. It can look very off and overwhelming in the viewer. In this particular scenario, you can always add the motion blur effect to the particles and adjust the settings there without having to alter the rest of the elements in your comp. Just be mindful that this can slow down your performance when you have motion blur on, so always adjust your settings or leave it off until you're ready to render. Finally, to round this off, there are additional effects that you can apply to make it more photo real. Similar to the lightning tutorial, you can add a subtle glow over everything to give it a subtle bloom. You can also add certain other effects such as anamorphic flares as well as lens dirt to make the composition a lot more realistic. For lens dirt textures, you can easily look online for them. However, I would recommend Action VFX's free stock library where you can find a free pack of those. Other sources are Javert Valbar's Inkscape Digital website for a free pack there. Film Riot also has a free library of these optical textures textures on Tryon Digital that you can also try out. Another key element is noise and grain. They are very effective for blending your effects with your footage, so always try to match the grain of your elements to the footage instead of just applying it to the whole comp. There are also additional techniques that you can use such as chromatic aberrations or lens warping to make your elements tie with your footage better, but once again it is very dependent on your individual shots. Try not to go overboard and keep everything subtle and neat. And I believe that is all I have for you today on creating realistic embers. You can find all the links to the various sites and resources in the notes below. If you are new to the channel, always consider subscribing and turning on the bell so that you are always up to date with new content on the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all within the next video.